Before we begin, I want to make few things clear so as to make this course effective for the majority of us. The premise here is that I have come across many embedded engineers who do not know the basics of how to split their code into multiple C and C++ source files. In fact, I met with some engineers in the recent past who had been developing embedded applications for about two years or so using STM microcontrollers. Their default way of working was to only write their code in the main .c file that is generated by default by the IDE, they literally shoved all their code in it. When they were finding a bug in code, they had to scan through the whole main .c file that was having about 5,000 or 6,000 lines at the time I met them. This is quite the basic knowledge of language, but I want to make it clear at this point, so as to clear it, in case there is anyone in the audience who has a similar problem in this domain. First thing that needs to be understood is the compilation process that starts with the source files, including the C++ source files, C source files, and the assembly language source files. C and C++ source files are referred to as compilation units and are compiled into respective object files by going through various phases of compilation. Assembly language source files are assembled to their respective object files by the assembler. In the end, when we have all the object files and already compiled libraries available, the linker takes all of them, optimizes the code, keeps the relevant pieces and converts to the final executable. This executable can be in any format, an exe file, a bin file, an elf file, or any other file that is finally used to burn a microcontroller or put on the target machine to run. Here I won't go into the details of each step. Because most of the IDEs or integrated development environments abstract away this detail, you only have to follow some rules, give your IDE the relevant file paths and the rest is done by your IDE. In order to split code into multiple compilation units, we need to understand the declarations versus the definitions. Here I'm not trying to teach the language itself, you would be knowing it already and that's what a prerequisite for this course. So, only the differentiation we are talking about here is about functions. On the left side is a declaration of a function names get count. And on the right side there is a definition of the same function. The definition holds what it does in reality, but the declaration only tells what type of data it takes and what type of data it returns. When a function is a member of a class then the declaration versus definition goes as is shown here. The key part is that declarations are required for compiling different compilation units into object files, and definitions are required when linking different object files by the linker. We are not discussing the modern concept of modules in relatively recent C++ standard because of two reasons primarily. One is that it is not supported by all the environments as we speak. Secondly, you will still find that the majority of code as of now uses the conventional concept of having a header file with H and a compilation unit file with C or CPP extension. Declarations and type definitions go into the header files, so that the same header file can be used in other compilation units for letting them to compile. And the definitions go into C or CPP file. There can be multiple compilation unit files to contain the definitions. The only key point is that the definition should be found by the linker when it links all the object files. As multiple header files can include other header files and a compilation unit can include all those header files. This scheme causes compilation issues. Without going into nitty gritty details of that, I'll suffice to mention that there are primarily two approaches to mitigate multiple definitions issues that come from the header files. Either you can use a pragma once compiler extension at the start of a header file, it will prevent the header file from getting included multiple times in a compilation unit's translation. The other way to do this is shown on the right hand side, and it is the most widely used and considered to be the standard way of doing so. It works based on defining a macro that is uniquely named that generally included a header file's name and optionally its relative path or project's name. 
Now, when the preprocessor sees the header file for the first time the macro is not defined so it goes ahead and defines it. So, when the second time the same file is encountered it rejects its content because this time the macro is defined. It's best to demonstrate the concept with an example. Although this is a very simple code, but we can demonstrate how to split it into multiple compilation units. Each IDE has different ways of adding and removing code files in a solution, and you can refer to its documentation. Arduino IDE allows simply placing CPP and H files in the same folder as Sketch, or you can add a new tab from here. This allows you to effectively add a new file to this solution. First I'll add status.h file to use as a header file. Now I have to add the cpp file with the same name so as to place my function definitions there. These two files that I have added are actually placed in the same folder as my sketch file. You can do this manually as well. Next thing I have to do is to have a unique include guard. It's recommended to include the file name in it. Now I'll copy and define this guard macro so that it remains the same. Last thing is to end the macro definition check to complete the guard. Now within this area will come our declarations and other header related things. Let's start moving relevant things. This status LED's pin number belongs to the status.h file. As we will be using this pin number in the CPP file, so we have to include the header file there. Setting up the status pin belongs to our status handling area. So, let's create a function for this purpose and do the setup in it. Declaration of this function goes to the header file for being used outside. So, I'll just copy this line and put it in the header file. And end it with a semicolon. Now this function can be used in the sketch file. Since we are using the functionality of Arduino, so we have to include the Arduino.h header in our CPP file. You can use the double quotes here, but it is convention to use the other brackets for the SDK library. Now the same procedure can be used to transfer the status LED blinking part of our code. As the last step we need to include our header file in this sketch. That's it, it's complete. We can check by compiling the code. Everything is fine as we have split our code into multiple compilation units. This thing is quite a least used part of C and C++ standard in the way of writing manageable applications by the new developers, despite the simplicity of doing it. The best way to learn is through practice. I would encourage you to check out the Happy Logics GitHub repository for this course. And try to split the given sketch file into logically separated code files. As a reference I've also included a sample solution. Your solution might be different from mine and that is okay. The aim is to logically separate code pieces into separate files while still reserving the functionality. Good luck!